all right here we go <laughs> hi everyone and welcome to my youtube channel caroline snits um and welcome to my new house i um well ben and i got the keys to our house a week and a half ago and um what you can't see is all the things that we haven't fully finished the downstairs is definitely livable um upstairs we're still waiting for some furniture and things to be sorted um, I should also say that um, because it's in the morning, the builders are just arriving and we live very close to the next house that's being built because we live in a new build. And so I can hear them playing loud music outside. I am hoping that it doesn't get picked up too much by a microphone, um, but you never know. And it's a tiny bit out of my control. Um, it's also strange having to film in a new place. I really had to think about where to set up and where it would be sort of best to do it. Um, I'm just going to move my tea in case it ends up fogging up the mic, uh, the camera. But um, I'm sitting on the sofa you've seen before. Um, but in the new house, we have bifold doors over on this side. So I actually think the light will be much better, even though it is an overcast day here in Scotland. So a little introduction about me. Obviously, I am Caroline. I live in Scotland with my partner Ben. We've just moved slightly more west, um, so we live very much central Scotland, I guess. Uh, we live basically in between Glasgow, Edinburgh and Stirling. <laughs> um, and I started knitting over a year ago now, and this little YouTube channel is a place where I talk about yarn and my projects and um, sort of other things that interest me. I am hoping today will be a slightly shorter episode just because I have less to show you and um, I think I will in the next few weeks have, have more to show. So first of all, what am I wearing today? Um, today I'm wearing my latest finished make which is this peacock sweater by uh, Lena Holm Samsu um, which you might have seen me knit um, yeah in the last episode basically. It took no time at all I think from starting it to finishing it in concentrated knitting time, it was less than two weeks, which is nothing, I don't think. Um, usually I would expect a sweater my size to be three to four weeks at least. Um, I will, as always, um, I always have a very detailed description box with all the links to anything I talk about, uh, links to patterns, links to yarn, etc. I've had a few people ask me if this pattern will be available in English because I think uh, so far it's only been Danish and, and Lena has said herself that it is uh, being translated so at some point you should be able to get the English version. Um, I knitted this in an Excel and I'll pop in a nice little um, video of it on. Um, I knitted this in an Excel and I did a few adjustment adjustments um, for the fit. So first of all I did um, a tabular knit stitch or twisted rib um, but I just didn't twist my pearls because there's no need for it. Um, I think if you twist, like if you do a fully twisted rib, it takes some of the, the stretch away from the ribbing. So I actually quite like leaving my pearls regular and you can't really tell. But I did that because on the needle size, I think ribbing can look a bit untidy and it really tidied up the, the ribbing. Um, because I knitted it in an XL instead of a 2XL, which would be with the recommended ease, I think you have a much better fit. Um, it sits a tiny bit tighter over my bust. I also knitted um, the body slightly shorter um, to give it more of a crop feel. And that's because I envisioned this one being very much as a sweater that I will wear with high-waisted things and with shirts, etc. Um, I have spoken about before that one of my other makes um, of 2021 was my Chunky Dahlia which similar to this has like a lace yoke and it's from the same designer. And I made all of these adjustments so that it was ever so slightly different. Um, I didn't want the two sweaters to be exactly the same. So even though the color of the two would have been quite different and the yarn was quite different, um, I just wanted to, to have a, them to serve a different purpose in my wardrobe, I guess. The original pattern recommends one strand of I think it's sand a Sunday or like a thin, very thin merino together with uh, two strands of my hair. Um, but I personally like it more with a tiny bit of chunk of yarn. But I think that could be lovely as well. 
Um, both the Chunky Dahlia and uh, the Peacock Sweater have obviously the, the lace piece. I think the Peacock Sweater was easier. Um, it was very, very quick to do and you have, even in lace patterns, a few rounds of just just knitting um, instead of having to do you know lace or have a changing pattern every row. So if you've never ever done um, lace before, I, I was always really scared by the sound of lace to me. It sounded like quite a complex thing only a very good knitter to, could do. But in reality, a yoke like this is nothing but knitting stitches together and doing yarn overs, um, knits and pearls. And I think all of those are fairly straightforward. So I wouldn't feel scared of it. I have to say though, I wouldn't start with a lace yoke as my first sweater piece. Um, but I think if you feel comfortable with, with those techniques, it's it could be a, a second sweater. There's no uh, short row shaping in it, which in retrospect, I kind of wish I'd added. Um, for my Chunky Dahlia, it wasn't as big a deal because it, the Chunky Dahlia is a lot longer. Um, I also pop in a video of the Chunky Dahlia if I can find it. But the Chunky Dahlia had a lot more length than the Peacock sweater does. And so I didn't really notice um, with short way shaping in the neck, especially you often get, you know, a sweater always wants to fall so it sits further down the back. Um, and with short row shaping, you get that higher neck. Um, so I kind of wish I'd added that, if I'm honest. I knitted this in a combination. I should quickly, as you can tell, I'm still getting into the groove of how all of these things work. Right, so I had a lot of yarn left over. I, <clears throat> today will add to my Ravi just how much I use, but I use a considerable less amount of yarn than I was really planning to. So chances are that my gauge has been off. Um, I think there's a big difference between using like, you know, 50 to about 50 grams or like a ball of yarn less than the pattern calls for. And then I think for this, um, you can see how much I have left. I have seven balls of my main yarn left, which um, I shouldn't have had. So I reckon that my gauge has been off even even with making the body a tiny bit shorter, um, I obviously wouldn't have used six balls, making it 10 centimeters longer. But anyway, um, my combination was um, my favorite second strand. Um, it was firstly the hand dyed yarn by Sakami or Feed the Bobbin on Instagram in the color Cinnamon Stone. So this is a 74% baby cereal pack and 26% silk. Uh, this is, um, each skein comes in 50 grams and it runs 300 meters. So it runs slightly shorter than my hair, but I actually don't find that it works out that much more expensive because obviously you get 50 grams. Um, so I have some of that left and then the sort of thicker or main strand, um, is the Lana Gatto class, which I bought from uh, knit.co.uk. I'll link uh, that down below as well in this is the color orange what has the color code 14198 it is 80% extra fine merino and 20% angora and 50 grams runs 125 meters so this combo is very soft um i am right now wearing this uh, purely with a bra underneath and i've spoken about before how I can be really, really sensitive to yarns. So the fact that I can wear anything <laughs> against completely bare skin is a sign that it's a very, very soft yarn. Um, however, I was hoping some of you could give me some advice. The reason I'm just wearing a bra underneath. Um, obviously I do think it's quite nice because you have the yarn overs on the yoke. So you kind of get um, like a bit of, bare skin through, even though I'd probably just look like I'm wearing a white undershirt because I'm so pale, but well, while it's really good, it is the most shedding sweater I have ever had. I th I don't think I'm particularly sensitive to, um, like I accept that if you have woolly yarns, um, you will get some shedding, like you get, you know, a bit of fluff on your trousers or on whatever shirt you wear with it. Um, you might get some more pilling, etc. This is, I have to be honest and say next level. Um, you can actually see, especially on the sleeves here, 
um, this is my third time wearing it and I have quite extensive pilling because the fibers are so soft. I did kind of expect that because I'd heard that from, I'd heard that before with Angora. So Angora is um, from rabbits and so it's a very, very soft fiber. Um, but I hadn't expected it to be this bad. Um, so I'm not sure if, like I'd, I'd love to know if there's any tricks to make it shed just less. Um, I've considered popping it in the freezer. Uh, that before can be good for the fibers to stop them shedding. And I've also considered giving it another wash. Um, this has been washed and blocked. Um, when I very first cast it off, the sleeves were a tiny bit short. They're still not long, long, as you can tell, but um, they definitely weren't like they, they needed blocked. And also I think the lace yoke turns out better. But yeah, the shedding has slightly put me off. <laughs> Uh, wearing it and using it just because um like it, it it was a lot um but it's a shame because i think this orange color is just so stunning and it's so soft and beautiful so i really want to find a way that i can stop the shedding and i've kind of put it on hold while we were moving because it's not very practical trying to put a sweater in a freezer that you have to defrost however um I could probably squeeze it in our new freezer and Ben would probably just think I'm slightly weird. Wow, even I can hear that, it's quite loud. The house is quite good because the windows are quite thick. So in general we haven't, I am really sensitive to building noise. I think from working in universities, I've always been very used to building works, always going on literally inside the same building. Um, I worked for university when I very first started working, that was, I don't know, six, 700 years old. Um, I used to work at University of Edinburgh and it, yeah, there was always be furbishing going on, but even I could hear that through my quite good windows. So anyway, any advice on shedding? Um, I would I would love to hear from you. Um, I should also say this is how I usually store all my yarns. I usually keep them in like a bag like this and then I have like leftover bits down here, the smaller bits. Um, and then I have all of the belly bands so I could quickly count for you how much I've used so I used that's 300 grams of an Erin weight yarn that's very very little in an XL and then I used two full skeins of the baby cereal packer that's incredibly little I always find I use less of my second strand like the cereal packer when I calculate how many meters I've knitted I always have knitted less of this um, I have no idea how that comes to, like, how that happens, but yeah, there's very little yarn. Oh, I started the third skein, so that's why that's in here as well. But yeah, that is very little. And again, I'm, I'm hoping if I can get the shedding to stop, I think for many people, especially if you're sensitive to itch, um, Lanagato class and the cereal packer is a perfect combo if you're willing to accept some pilling because it's a soft fibre, but yeah. It has been next level. I just love the colour so much. Anyway, um, with the leftover yarn, there's obviously a full project in here. I think it might become um, a slipover. It, that's my current thoughts. Enough about that. Um, my current whips. So obviously with the moving, um, I haven't been knitting that much since I last saw you. If I'm honest, <laughs> the, the week before moving, um, the flat was just filled with boxes, there was so much to be done and the week of moving was such a hard week so um, I've actually only really been, after I finished this, um, which didn't take very long, um, I just have been knitting on my office sweater which has gotten quite far. Um, so this is the office sweater from Knit Flitter that I have been test knitting um, and in what would be a 2XL. Um, so you can tell I have sleeve number one, I have sleeve number two, and then I'm just working on the body. I tried it on yesterday and it's sort of waist length just now, so probably needs another good 10, 15 centimeters um, before I'm gonna bind it off. I want it to be sort of mid to hip. Um, I have been knitting um, from, my very failed gauge that I spoke about in the last episode 
um, like just straight from it. I considered unraveling it all, but I was like, why would I do that? Why can I not just knit from this? And um, so I basically, for the fail gauge, I had finished one sleeve um, and I, I unraveled that um, and that's what I used to, to sort of cast on. And then when I finally got to the sleeves, I then used straight from what was left of the body. So I've actually managed to knit two sleeves, two full sleeves, and um, like probably about this much of the body, like this much from, from yeah, the leftover sweater. Um, I do also think it's not going to do this justice um, because obviously the yarn that I'm knitting with is noodle yarn and I'm not really too like I can tell if I take it and I do this you can already see it's like straightening out the noodles considerably so I think it will wash out just fine however obviously it does mean that now currently knit it up especially the sleeves they just they look like I've knit it really unevenly and I think it's just because they need a good block there's also um, loads and loads of ends to weave in, which I could probably start doing um, because, yeah, there's a lot, a lot, a lot. I think because some of this yarn has been knit out three times, um, to unravel it and stuff, I have at times just cut through half skeins, etc. So, yeah, um, I tried it on last night for the first time after I've like, finished a significant chunk of it and it looks very, very good, much better than the first time. Again, this is in desperate need of a block when I tried it on. You could especially see it up here by the, the shoulder. It kind of sat a bit funny. And I think, again, it's just noodle yarn. Um, but yeah, as I mentioned before, it's a really interesting construction up here where you do the saddle shoulder um, while you do increases. Um, basically, you do the saddle shoulder while doing short rows. So you start with increases in different tempi together with short row shaping which is quite hard um i think if you're not used to short row shaping this is definitely a pattern i wouldn't do unless you have done a bit of short row shaping just because keeping track of moving backwards and forwards and doing the increases is quite hard um however one thing i did do after seeing you on almanac was having the stitch markers on like where i was doing increases so that i could basically count how many I'd done so when I did the first increase obviously you have your, your stitch markers for where you increase from like the raglan stitch or that kind of like stitch that you keep constant but then when I did the first increase on either you know on the other side I placed a stitch marker and then every time I did an increase that would obviously move leaving you know meaning that I could count well I've done five increases here and I've done four increases here etc um, and I think that was definitely something I'm going to do again even if I was doing something quite simple because it makes counting much much quicker um, because you can just at a glance see where you're at um, I think also knitting in dark grey yarn is another thing I would not recommend for a beginner this is very very hard to count in and even if I wanted to I don't I honestly don't think I could count accurately which is a completely different thing compared to knitting in this kind of this kind of orange color which is very easy to count in um much easier to count gauge etc so um little warning pass on um i am very excited for this to be done because i think it'll be quite a good staple um i know that in the wash this um when i did my final gauge swatch before i started this it did it did grow about two stitches so i'll be intrigued to see how much it actually grows when i'm done um, but this I'm currently knitting on three and a half millimeter needles and it takes a very long time <laughs> in my size. It's, um, it's such a contrast to a project like this, which just felt like such a quick, easy project, um, compared to this, which is really, truly, you know, something I've spent many, many hours on. And, and what's always really intriguing is I've had a lot of very positive attention for this, um, I think people really like the colour and the design and this has had a lot less attention on social media and I guess it's just because this is a lot less often interesting knit um it's more of a, a classic classic knit um but I think it'll be very very nice once it's done 
So I'm hoping to get quite a few centimetres added. Um, I think it'll be quite a good meeting knit. Uh, meeting knit. Um, you might also notice my stitch holders, which I'm going to talk about in acquisitions later. So yeah, that is actually all that I have been knitting on. Um, I finished one sleeve in about two days-ish. Um, because the sleeves are because the sleeves are quite um, thin, um, obviously they're not ballooned like this. Um, I found it to be quite fast. You also do, you can actually see, you can see the, the decreases that lie here. Um, I actually found the sleeves to be very, very fast. Um, so I knit one sleeve in about a weekend. And then I, the day before we got the keys to the house, I started the other sleeve and um, I finished it the Sunday after. So it took me a solid week to knit the second sleeve, but um, that's okay too. Um, I should also say that, of course, I am doing Italian Fine Off. Um, I just prefer it. I think it will look really good once it's done. And it's just so much more usable than um, any other Bind Off that I have tried. Now let's talk about what's um, next on my needles, um, because that ties into acquisitions as well. Um, for complete full transparency, and I'll pop it on screen as well according to the rules, I have received this yarn for test knitting and thus this is gifted. I will be doing a test knit for Augustine's. I will be doing, um, I will be making the Augustine's number 17, um, which is basically a t-shirt, or not a t-shirt, it's like about here, with big puffy sleeve, it has an eye cord, it's like quite a chunky knit. So yeah, I'll be doing a test knit for that, which is really, really exciting. I will show you the yarn still with the belly bands on and not the ones that have been gauge swatching from. There we go. The yarn for this project was kindly sponsored by Knitting for Olive. So it's knitted in one strand of Knitting for Olive's Double Soft Merino and the second strand is a, a, their Soft Silk My Hair. I have never used, obviously, um, if you've been a a viewer for a while you will know that I have uh, test knitted for knitting knitting for all of themselves so I've tried the uh, soft silk my hair before however I have never tried the double soft merino which is as far as I remember yeah it's just 100% merino um, they don't have that many colours in double soft so at first I was a bit in doubt kind of what combo I wanted um, you're absolutely spoiled for a choice usually uh, knitting for all of it has probably the biggest amount of silk my hair that I have ever seen. They just have shades that are just ever so slightly different. Like, you know, like a normal brand might have like a light beige, a dark beige, a light pink, a dark pink, one red, a gray and a black, and you know, maybe a natural white. And that's, that's maybe their color, you know, their color choices. Knitting for Olive has like 10 different pinks and then they have 10 different colours in, you know, the sort of rusty, you know, like starting from like this kind of orange colour going to, you know, a dark red, etc. So really are spoiled for choice on the silk my hair front. But for double soft, um, they only had, I think about 15 or 20 different colours, maybe less. I don't know. Um, I did, however, know that um, Augustine's... Um, Designs are very, very feminine. And I thought for that design, I always, when I pick colors for a project, I always think really carefully about how I will wear it. So um, for example, the, the gray office sweater is perfect because um, I assume I'll wear that with like maybe a nice white shirt or with busy colored skirts where I want something neutral, something like this. Um, in this orange colour, I plan for that to be, you know, the pop of colour. I'll probably wear that with black trousers and a black shirt underneath. And for the Augustine's one, so her one is knitted in like a, like a beige. I think it's like, you know, like kit or, or, or you know, that, those kind of neutral colours. Um, but I thought the way I would wear it would probably be with a nice pair of jeans or even a skirt that kind of matched the colour. 
um, without being too dominant and then and then that so that's why I went for two pinks so um, again it's always hard to match colors on the internet and I was really happy when it arrived because it was a I was a bit in doubt if this was a bit of a rogue choice if they would be too different so this is um, the double soft merinos is in the color rose and the soft silk my hair is in the color rose clay and it's the, obviously the clay part that makes it slightly, slightly um, like cooler or dusty. Um, this rose clay colour is beautiful. Um, but I do like how it just softens up a bit. Um, have the world's most hideous gauge swatch. But I think together they actually made um, quite, quite a good combination. Like they are, yeah, I think, I think it works quite well actually. Um, because of the nature of the double soft merino, because it is this, um, see, I thought it was going to be a blow yarn, like Camaroy Sniffnook, but, um, it's like it's in between a blow yarn and a, like a, a chained yarn, I guess it's called, I think. Um, it's like it's in between that. And that means that the silk, my hair, because, um, you know, the silk thread, you are going to see it, um, quite Quite a lot in the in you know in the knit you will be able to see there's a second strand of silk in my hair but I quite like that um as I said I've never knitted in this before and um a Danish podcaster called Knits and Jam has spoken about double soft merino before and how she hates knitting with it and it's funny because like sitting here touching it I had you not told me what it was made of it almost feel like there would be some acrylic in it or some kind of man-made fiber but it is a hundred percent merino and as usual with knitting for olive you obviously get traceable non mole seed uh, ecotech standard 100 merino so it's one of those yarns where um all the ethics are very good so like to the touch it almost feels a bit chalky yeah, a bit chalky is probably the best term for it. Um, however, knitted up when I was knitting it, um, because when I touch it, I almost because it feels chalky, I almost feel like I need to put on moisturizer. But when I was knitting it, you don't feel it. You don't feel that chalkiness. It's only really when you touch the ball. And now that it's been washed, like this swatch doesn't have that feeling at all. Um, so yeah, um, I would be intrigued to see what it's like when I actually start um, the whole the whole knit itself. Um, yeah, because it's a bit of a funny feeling. Uh, knitting for all of soft silk my hair is always very, very lovely. I don't know if it's the softest silk my hair I've ever felt, but I do think um, it feels lovely and the colours are very good and, and it's probably one of the ones I've gotten on with better than others. So yeah, I should... Uh, basically, my my rant today because obviously um there's not much to show i haven't been doing that much since i was last here um i i know augustine's is one of those designers like she's put up before that when she looks for test litters like i think for the augustine's number 17 she had over 850 applicants and so to be perfectly honest i said i would test it expecting not to get it just because I know that she gets so many applicants and um, it's a funny thing because I think it's almost like it's just unimaginable to me that so many you know you get so many people and if there's anyone out there thinking wow you're so lucky like I was one of the people that put in for it I do think in general I'm very lucky when it comes to test knits in the sense that I can often test knit a size that it's hard to get test knitters for because I think for Augustine's it has very limited positivities. It actually only has about five centimeters. So for Augustine's, I will be test knitting what I think is about a 2XL roughly. And I just know that that's not a very popular size. And so I would say um, in a lot of ways, it's not always that beneficial to be a bigger size. But I think for test knitting, you have a lot more you can much more pick and choose what you do because you are not as wanted, like you're much harder to find size. Um, I know Augustine's has said before that when she picks test knitters, 
she doesn't necessarily look at followers but she just want people who show actual photos of the knits on and that have like an active profile like she she looks for people who you know sort of suit her style even if they don't have loads of followers um and obviously i do post regularly on my knitting instagram and i show all the knits on my body so i do think that makes me very very fortunate um however i would say that the downside to it is that a lot of garments in my size um if i have a three week turnaround for um a full sweater i can't i couldn't do it um just because you know this was fairly quick and something in this type of gauge i might be able to do it but like the office sweater that um which is i think 22 stitches to 10 centimeters i could never knit a gauge like that in three weeks even if i spent all my time knitting on it and i just don't want that kind of pressure um for test knitting some designers are just expecting such a quick turnaround and i think i'm kind of done with um test knitting onto that under that much pressure that being said there is um a 7th of june deadline for this and obviously i haven't started it yet um today is i don't know what day it is um it is end of may so um i'm waiting for i i should have known i needed a 40 centimeter circular needle to start the project so that's arriving today then i can cast on um however i felt comfortable um applying for the test knit because it has i think this is this um the project will have 10 stitches to 10 centimeters which is obviously a very like it's quite chunky knit um it'll be on 10 10 centimeter needles um and so i felt like i could realistically manage by the seventh because it was chunky enough that with you know a, a concentrated amount of knitting time and knitting on nothing else i could manage it um so yeah that's why i applied and also because i didn't expect to get it i have definitely learned that i need to think very carefully about what i sign up to um as i've said before sponsored yarn isn't everything so i really want to only sign up for things i really want to do so yeah it is obviously really exciting to to get the sponsored yarn and i'm really excited to tell you what it's like when it's done because um i think it would be great for everyone then i ordered the yarn off knitting uh, knitting for olives website um the danish one and um it was here i think less than a week later yeah less than a week um and um yeah got through fine and um, because it was sponsored they hadn't put um a value on the package so i don't know if that's how it, it didn't get caught in customs i only paid for the shipping um which was about six pounds i think which i think from denmark isn't actually too bad um, so just if anyone else is wanting to get hold of knitting for all of they do still ship from Denmark to the UK and they do do the whole custom declaration so you're worth keeping in mind so yeah I will keep you posted hopefully the next time I see you it's done <laughs> because it really should be um, the needles I bought for the project is I'm going to be using the Knit Pros plastic needles which I've used before um, just because they are fairly affordable needle and i already own the nine millimeter which is the green one i have the same like the acrylic one for eight millimeters as well and i think in the seven and then i bought the tens um they are i think quite pointy i wouldn't buy plastic needles on very small sizes in case they break however i think when you get up to this size a very chunky like chunky needle um, it can get quite heavy and the plastic ones are very light. I bought them originally for traveling because I thought if I had to go on a plane and they told me to throw my needles away, I wouldn't really upset if it had been like my symphony needles, but these like cheap plastic ones, not really too bothered. So that's why I bought these. So in my big knitting needle quest, I will feed back on what I feel like after knitting a whole project on Misty's. Um, but yeah, I thought I thought they might be quite a good alternative because they're plastic. They're also they're funny in between slippiness. So yeah, so far so good. Um, I've seen if you look at the reviews on Amazon, lots of people complain that they're see through and like 
it's a bit disorientating seeing your stitches through. I have to say I've knitted like, um, obviously I took it traveling when I flew to Denmark back in August when it was allowed and I followed all the COVID rules, etc. Um, I, I had uh, this, the eight millimeter ones on a project and I really did not notice it. Knitting the gauge watch did really not notice it because they aren't like clear clear. Um, they're just clear enough that you can sort of see some things through. So I don't know. I wouldn't be too worried. Yeah, so that's the test knit I'm about to begin. And if you're out there really wanting to test knit, I would also say it's the best way to become a test knitter is to follow the designers that you want to test knit for. I I think for, for Knit Flitter, for example, I told her very early on, she's just um, showing off her latest design called the Day Off sweater, which is like, um, also like this kind of chunk, like not chunky, but like around the seven millimeter needle size um, with like, an, a, it's longer in the back and it has thumb holes and it's a very like relaxed and comfy fit. So I'm hoping, I think so at least, uh, that she'll let me test it that one. So I got a test knitting spot for that because I offered, right? I said, I really want to test it this design, but I also speak to Nina behind Knit Flitter very, very frequently. But for people like Herb Glustines or Knitting for Olive, etc., um, and also my first test knit for Divine Knitwear, I just, when they put up a story saying they were looking for test knitters, I just volunteered. For many designers, um, especially the 2XL size and up, um, even XL are just the ones that they can't fill. So if you, you know, if you are that size and really keen, then keep a look out for your favourite designers. If you struggle with a deadline, often I think it's at least worth saying, listen, I can't knit a sweater that fast, but I could realistically knit it in this time frame. Would that work for you? Because many designers would rather make sure, you know, that sweaters are, are test knitted and, and, you know, that they can be size inclusive. Um, and I think... I think sometimes it's okay to be a tiny bit upfront about saying I can do this and I can't do that. I've had someone ask before, like, what's what's sort of the purpose of test knitting? Um, like what's what's the benefits to you as the knitter? And I think there are a few. Um, obviously one major selling point um for many will be if they're sponsored yarn or discount. I obviously, as you have probably been able to tell in the past by my uh, yarn buying don't have that limited a budget as some people do but if I had a limited budget I can tell you this is straight up I would be going for every single test knit that I could find often if you are a student you might not have a lot of money but you might have a lot of time and so the free yarn may just simply mean that you can knit in yarns that you would struggle to afford when I was a student you know something like knitting for olives yarns would oops Knitting for, oh, oh, we have hardwood floors now, so lots of noise. Um, something like knitting for olive yarns would have been completely out of my project. I could never have justified spending, you know, £80 on a project. And um, so, yeah, I think that can be a really good reason. Um, the second benefit of test knitting is obviously getting access to designs that you wouldn't otherwise knit. Um, you obviously get pattern for free. Sometimes the designer will also offer you another pattern. I've heard that before. I haven't had that. Um, but often when they've finalized it, they'll send you the final pattern. Um, so depending on what you're knitting, it might be a pattern that you use again. I think especially, I saw Penrose Knits made one for what she's knitted for her children. And I think, you know, if you've done a child knit, even if it isn't in the size that they'll wear forever, then you can, you know, you can use it again. And I'll just apologize about beeping outside um so that's another benefit obviously that you get the pattern for free again patterns aren't very expensive but it does add up pretty quickly if you buy a lot of patterns the third one is and this has been major for me um is the new like the contact you get with the designer and for me that's quite an important aspect of the test knitting process um you can obviously, you know, they, they get you to test knit because you are a different size than they are and they want you to tell them how it fits. And in that process, you can have 
chats around how could you improve the fit. I've also found that often you get very good pattern support. So um, when I test knit it way back when, um, this is covered in some, probably my first or second podcast episode. Um, when I test knit it for Divine Knitwear, I had never done short, very, short, short bows before. And she was such an angel in helping me understand the pattern and helping me do it. And for me, it, I am still to this day really thankful for the help uh, that she offered, um, just because I think it really helped me be able to do a pattern that was actually quite difficult for things like the office sweater when I got stuck. You know, Nina was back within five minutes to help me move forwards. And again, if you're still a fairly new knitter or you're doing something quite outside your normal like comfort zone, that's very good. And the fourth one, um, this isn't major for me, um, not anymore at least, but I think for some people it might be. Some people really enjoy, enjoy the, the, the pressure. Obviously when you have a tight deadline, it's like you have to, you really have to focus your efforts on knitting just one project. And if you're like a, you know, there can never be too many whips type person and you always have a million projects on the go, then it can be kind of good to say, well, in the next two to three weeks or whatever, I'm purely knitting on this project. This is the project that I will get done. In general, this is why I don't like the tight deadlines because the office sweater has needed to be in the pile of shame for a little while, um, which has been nice. Um, and obviously for Augustine's, for example, I will not have time to be angry at it. I'll just have to move on, get over myself. I've seen that mentioned before um, by a lady called Knit Pit on Instagram. Um, she does loads of test knits and I think for her, that's why she loves it. She loves that it needs to get done quick and that focus on knitting. Yeah, and then I guess the fifth benefit is depending on who you test knit for, it can give you a lot of exposure. So personally, I'm not too bothered about my follower count. I have found that my Instagram has just steadily grown. In some periods, it grows crazy. You know, I've had weeks where I put something up and, um, you know, in a few weeks, I've, I've grown like a hundred followers. I remember when High Knits gave me a shout out, it, I, I could tell people followed me from that, but, but also sometimes I maybe get one or two followers a week and I've just kind of given it time to organically grow on Instagram. But of course, if you do a test knit for a very, very big designer and you take beautiful photos or whatever, then you might get followers from it. You might get more interactions with your content. Um, I know, for example, I follow uh, the, test, the, the sort of frequent test knitters for Petite Knit and my favourite things knitwear and my size. Um, they definitely, both of them have testers that they tend to use again and again. And so I like to follow them because they often test knit the designs in the size that I will end up knitting anyway. But I will always caution to say that I think I definitely have to work with myself not to not to be too overly focused on the next thing and not to be too focused on what will give more follower interaction. And I actually found Instagram became a lot more fun and enjoyable for me when I kind of just thought, I'll post what I like and I'll spend less time. I think I mentioned it, I can't remember if I mentioned it in the last episode, but I had about a month where I posted every day and I spoke to Nap Time Knitter about it at the time. She was like, it's not, it's not like a lot of work, but I actually found that when I was posting every day, I was just in the morning thinking, what could I do? Then I'd spend 10 minutes taking one photo and then upload it. And I really noticed a difference with being very active on Instagram. And yeah, it was just fine. And I think if you do the test knitting purely for followers, I think you will find that, you know, you might get so focused on the outcome of that, that it might not be as enjoyable, but it can be a good side benefit. And there's definitely, um, especially the test knit I did for knitting for Olive, I could tell people were obviously looking at their designs and finding me through that. And I did get some interactions through that. So so yeah, that's a big long ramble about test knitting and, and Instagram and followers and all that. And I think it's such a hard topic, you know, numbers are, and likes and interactions are, it's such a funny thing um, because 
I also know that I get offered opportunities based on on that, on my numbers, I guess. But at the same time, it is just a hobby and I never want my knitting, like I want knitting to be my hobby. I don't want knitting to be a part-time job. It doesn't have to be for me. I have massive respect. Actually, um, for the, like a really good example of someone I think who really does it in like a, almost like a part-time job kind of way and I really enjoyed the way she does her content is to knit Pearl Girl. She does a lot of stuff with We Are Knitters at the moment and I'm just really impressed by having great photos and um, having lots of good stories that feel very personal. Like you almost feel like you know her right and I just am really impressed with that level of commitment and I'm just not sure I could do that. I don't know, I'd, I'd be really interested obviously as usual thoughts on test knitting and on Instagram and that kind of interplay between, you know, sometimes getting chosen for test knits can, can almost feel a bit like you're being judged whether or not you're good enough to do it. And obviously if you've applied to become a test knitter and don't get it, it can be a bit upsetting. And that's also why I'm very conscious that, for example, my test knit for Augustine's, it wasn't that hard for me because I knit an unusual size but um but yeah it can it can also seem like a bit of a privilege and yeah it's a bit of a hard one and and all the content creation like what kind of content does people actually want to see um personally i can tell that i quite like having my stories be much more casual and over time i think i've made them much more about me as a person i kind of try to have them have a similar spirit to these podcasts that aren't as formal whereas I like my feed to feel much more formal but maybe another time I can speak more about um how I take photos and how I edit photos and all that let me know if you'd be interested in that I'm not the best whatsoever and I think I decided a long time ago that I'm not sure like content planning is for me but as I move on I'm actually starting to think it might be nice to you know on a Sunday sit down and post like a series of you know plan a series of posts so yeah uh, this yarn is the only acquisition since last i also have um as i mentioned in the very end i bought these i'm sorry this isn't very neat this is my own i have a nice clean bag um um all the range in denmark is flexible stitch holders you will notice that um i need to properly make sure i know how to use them um but i used them yesterday they're essentially these little hollow tubes that sit right here at the very tip of your needle and it means that for example when I tried this on yesterday I needed slightly more you know um, my cable wasn't long enough that it would fit over and then you could use the flexible stitch holders to create uh, more room you can also use the flexible stitch holders for the sleeves if you'd want um, so yeah, I've seen them used loads in Denmark, but they, they're not sold over here for some odd reason. And um, the lady who owns the knitting shop called Knit, Knit and Living, um, she's called Kimmy. And um, she wrote to me once because she's Danish like me actually, but lives in the UK. And she's like, oh, you know, what kind of yarns do you like? And it kind of got us talking. And um, so she is now, as far as I know, the only UK based person who sells these. And... Um, I just thought it would be really useful to make trying on easier and so I bought them and so yeah, I'll link, link them down below but she very kindly sent me one pack of these to give away so um, I'll probably do a giveaway on Instagram just because I think it'll be easier to manage than on YouTube um, maybe I'm wrong I don't know but I think I'll do it on on Instagram and I will just uh, double check with Kimmy what we'll do but yeah if you're keen to win some of these, uh, follow me on Instagram. Again, as usual, link down below together with my Ravelry page, Ravelry page which I should always preface and say I very I don't keep up with Ravelry like I do with Instagram. So I've had people contact me on there before and then I forget to get back just because I, I check it. I only really check it when I up, like update my projects. But anyway, I will be giving some of these away. Um, these ones fit, and I think the pack she sends send. Um, they fit small needles, I can't remember the exact sizes, um, but she also sends, uh, sells some that are for slightly bigger, bigger needles, so, uh, so far so good, really enjoying them. 
and that's all the rant all the ranting i had to do for today um i feel like i should start being more prepared and have like a night a neat nice and neat list of everything i want to mention but then i also kind of like the casual format of wherever my talks take me that's where i want to go i also just want to say um a massive thank you to everyone who left uh, comments um while i was doing the moving i didn't keep up with my comments as much as i usually do and i was just it was so heartwarming when i checked back in that there was comments and people were being so lovely um I didn't tidy the house today or I would have shown you more of it. Um, obviously, I think here at the end of the podcast is always a good time to talk about non-knitting related things. So people can easily just leave if they're not interested. Um, but do let me know. Would you like to see some of the house when it's a bit more finished? Um, currently, I don't have a wardrobe. Um, we bought a new build, as I said. Um, it's a semi-detached three bedroom house, which for us feels massive. As I said, we bought in, um, we live in Falkirk Council, if that, that won't mean very much to very many people, but it is very much like easy to commute to lots of places, but not close to lots of places at the same time. Um, and it's really interesting with properties in the UK, property buying is very expensive. And um, by buying out here, um, we could afford a house with our own garden and all of this. Whereas if we had bought I say, if, you know, for the same amount of money, this house costs, um, in Edinburgh, that would maybe be a one or two bedroom flat in not the best of conditions, not the best of locations. So, um, yeah, it makes a lot of sense to sort of move out further. Um, as I said, because it's a new build, um, there's a lot of stuff we have to sort. So, um, tomorrow our shed arrives. So we have a shed to put the garden tools because we now have a garden and, um, we also, I don't have a wardrobe yet, um, so we're waiting. I basically um, convinced Ben that I needed a, a Pax wardrobe from Ikea, so I've designed my own Pax wardrobe. It's not very big, it's, <laughs> but um, at least it'll be all mine. Um, so I'm hoping um, that maybe end of June, I would be able to do and organise my, my yarn. Um, moving also made me realise just, um, I have in the past shown you how my yarn was stored in the last flat. And so if you look back on my channel, um, I'll link it down below as well. You can see my yarn stash and it hasn't changed as much as it probably should have in that time, just because I've been buying other yarns and I've been doing other projects. Um, but yeah, I, now that we've moved, um, when I was unpacking the yarn, I was like, this is a lot more yarn. <laughs> kind of expected it to be so I definitely um should not be buying yarn for a little while so yeah do let me know if you want to see more of the house itself um I love a good yarn stash video it's probably the one of my videos that I've done the least well so <laughs> maybe it's just me who really like my yarn stash videos um but I might film a more detailed one um do let me know if you want me to talk about um, my whole yarn stash if I should sit down on the floor with all the yarn next to me and talk about all the projects I've planned it might be a very long video I also had quite a few comments saying they really wanted the yarn substitution one so I'll do that um, and yeah do do let me know if you want a little a little cheeky tool um, I don't know if I'll put more house content on Instagram stories I might but anyway I will stop rambling now because this was supposed to be a short video and yet here we are like 50 minutes later. Um, as usual the link's down below and I will see you soon. Bye!